With almost every rim out there being aluminum or a cast wheel, there's a lot of space in the face of the wheel. And it doesn't look good if you have a wheel weight in there. So Dave, what are our options for hiding that weight? Well, we have actually several of them, Andrew. Uh, we can do what's known as a, a spoke balance. A spoke balance is gonna put the correction weight behind one of the spokes itself. Um, it'll identify the number of spokes and the angle between the spokes themselves, and we can balance that way and hide the correction weight that way. Another way, we can just do the standard dynamic uh, modes by using a clip-on weight and a tape-on weight, or using two tape-on weights doing it that way. All of those will put the correction weight inside of the, of the center section of the wheel itself, where you will not see any correction weight on on the outside of the wheel is what most customers want these days. One other way with smart weight, uh, sometimes we can actually do a dynamic two-plane balance collect, uh, correct for the up and down and the side-to-side -side forces by using one weight. And we can place that somewhere in between the two planes themselves. So Dave, let's look at this 18-inch rim on the Hunter Road Force Elite. All right, we're going to balance this particular wheel, and as I said before, Andrew, we actually are using cameras uh, on this to measure the inside barrel of the wheel as far as dimensions go and the profile of that so the machine picks out the proper weight placement for us. And that also even picks up runout too. So go ahead and let's drop the hood and we'll spin so we come up with. We'll check for force variation. The best thing that I would do, uh, it gives you the best balance and uses the least amount of correction weight is by using smart weight itself. Okay. okay. And, and smart weight w uh, looks at uh, uh, balance on a wheel a little bit differently than the, the old balancer logic that we used to use. We have the static force that you're seeing right here, and of course this one's red, indicating that it's out of tolerance. So most of the imbalance on this wheel is due to static force. You can see our couple force, which is our side-to-side -side imbalance, is actually within tolerance here. Okay, so we actually tighten up the tolerance on the static force, loosen up the tolerance a little bit on the couple force, and that will give us a dynamic balance. Let's go ahead and we'll place the weight on here and we'll see what we come up with on this particular one here. Okay. So you got your one and a half. And this goes right behind the spoke. And servo it to your next location. Okay, you want one ounce. Okay. All right. Now you can see how the couple force and the static forces is both have dropped down considerably here. Okay. So it is a properly balanced assembly at this, this point. Okay. So whenever I want to hide the correction weight, what I would suggest is this. Use the spoke mode, use the uh, clip tape mode, use the double tape mode, or if possible, it'll come up automatically, it'll use the single tape weight mode where it'll move the position between these two points right here. All of these will give you a proper dynamic balance and cancel the static and the couple forces also. So this way you stay away from the static balance. Exactly. Because it's a trap for some assemblies. And it could be a potential comeback, that is correct. So Dave, thank you very much for those options when it comes to balancing some of these unique tire and wheel assemblies. You're welcome. Major Markel, thank you very much.